We're 31 already. We're actually much older than that. But uh, this is NixOS number 31. Caching source builds with Cachex. Um, so a little bit about how NixOS works in stock mode. Um, if you issue a NixOS rebuild command, um, what it does is it first looks in a cache that's at cache.nixos.org for the derivation it's about to build and all of the, that derivation's dependencies. And if it can't find anything in there, it'll build it from source, which means it'll go download it from, you know, wherever the upstream is and whatever. So nine times out of 10, you very, very rarely do you see, see things building from source in NixOS. That's because the cache is, is holding on to most, most everything. Anything that it can redistribute, it holds on to. Um, so, uh, I recently, my last video had me building a, uh, custom Linux kernel. I had to apply a patch to get my looper on. Um, and I have four ThinkPads, uh, two are P51s, one is a P52 and one's a P50. And building the Linux kernel takes about an hour or so. Now, this is not a big deal. I could certainly sit down and you know, run, run uh, NixOS rebuild on all those machines and have all of them rebuild the kernel. But I thought this was a good opportunity to take advantage of a resource I know, know that exists. It's called Cachex, and it is at cachex.org. I think, I think what, what this means here, this users have a five, five gigabyte limit for open source projects. I think what happens, I could be wrong, I think what happens if if you you can get a, an account and sign up and you can use five gigabytes of storage and if you want any more than five gigabytes of storage you have to start a plan so I think you know twenty gigabytes of storage is the lowest plan hundred gigabytes of storage et cetera et cetera et cetera so you can create an account for totally free on here and I believe that you can actually use it for totally free as long as your derivations don't um, compute to more than five gigabytes. So just FYI, the derivations I built that had to do with Linux kernel, which also had to do with the NVIDIA drivers because they, they depend on the kernel version. And I think steam had to rebuild and some other stuff, but it, it came to about a, a, like 1.23 gigabytes. What you do is you go create an account at cashix.org, you know, you go sign up, whatever you can use your GitHub account to do that. Um, It'll ask you to create a personal authentication token. So I've already done that here. Uh, but you can generate, you know, I called mine Chris M, whatever. But you just go to the, after you create an account, you go to your, you know, your account page or whatever and create a new token. Once you've done that, you can go create a binary cache in caches here. So I created one called McDonk. That's how I know that I have 1.23 gigabytes of storage used. Let's see it in action. So uh, when you run NixOS rebuild in a system that has to compute ner new derivations, it puts all those derivations in Nix store. When you go install Cachex, which is documented here, uh, you can just add it to your your configuration. If you go to your the the, the ins installation is is damn simple. You just go and in your configuration add it there in your in your package list. <laughs> That's it. And then once you do that, uh, you'll have this cache command available in your shell. Uh, and the first thing you have to do is well, before you use the cache command, you have to have the auth token. So you have to have gone, gone and generated the auth token. You have to do this cache auth token and then paste in the auth token that you get. And then before you build, before you, you run a build that you know is gonna cause something to generate things that you like to cache, for example, a NixOS rebuild that, with a custom kernel, you can do cache watch store and cache name. And so any store path Anything in next store that you create during the build will be pushed up to your cache. So in my case, I, before I started 
I, I, I built my custom kernel once on one system, and I did not use Kashix for that. I couldn't figure out quite how to know which derivations got built as a result of the first try, you know, on the, on the first system. So I decided, okay, well, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not that smart. So I'm just going to let it, I'm going to, I'm going to let it build from source again one more time on another system and I'll run Kashix watch store while it does so. And when I do that, you know, you type Kashix watch store in one, one terminal window in another terminal window, you just run your NixOS rebuild. And as, as your NixOS rebuild runs, it actually watches Nix store for new store pass and it pushes them as you know, like this. I'll show a little video of that, that going. The, the things that were actually pushed as a result of that kernel build are the patch that I described in the last video, which is for my Roland Looper. It rebuilt the NVIDIA drivers, I guess the some something about the NVIDIA drivers because they depend on the kernel version. I don't know what half this stuff is, really, and I don't know why it needed to be generated as a result of rebuilding the kernel, but apparently it does. So, Steam, whatever, a bunch of stuff that adds up to 1.23 gigabytes of stuff. So, like I said, I was too dumb to figure out how to how to send stuff up to the cache on the system that I'd originally built on the kernel, the kernel on, but it's possible. You can just, you can send a, a, anything that's in your cache store, you can send up to the cache. As long as you can figure out what you need to send up to the cache, you can do it. Uh, once you do that, um, on another system, which I, which I did, I had a P50 that I, that I wanted to install the same kernel on. And on that system, what I did was I, Installed Kashix by running my NixOS read my share. I have a shared configuration. All these systems get essentially the same configuration. Um, I uh, ran my NixOS rebuild once to get Kashix, and then I used Kashix auth token to install my auth token, and then I called sudo Kashix use cache name and Kashix use. All it does it's just a file generator. It just writes stuff into Etsy NixOS, and it writes one file called cachex.nix and another directory called cachex, which contains one or two files in it. And then you just edit your configuration.nix to include the, the generated cachex nix as an import, you know, in, your, in one of your import equal lines. So for me, what that looks like is uh, configuration.nix. So I just have it in there, and uh, this is not in Etsy NixOS. This is my own custom configuration that I've moved, but it's a it's essentially the same thing. It's not just in a different location. So uh, Kashik Nix is just just this, and there's a, I moved the Kashik directory that I generated over here. It has another file in there. Um, these files don't have any secrets in them, so it's perfectly reasonable to to check them into into version control. So it's not a problem. Because they're perfect, you know, if you check them in somewhere and share these, share those two directories, you needn't run Kashix use on every system. If you're, once, once it's once it's committed and you, you've, you've used your Kashix Nix in your configuration, uh, I don't think it needs an auth token. So then I ran NixOS rebuild. Uh, you know, it, it, it did not rebuild the kernel. It just took stuff from the cache. And as long as I... Um, use, you know, my Kashix configuration and systems that I run. Um, you know, I'm likely to do it sparingly just for things that I know are going to, like this kernel build that takes a long time. Uh, then it'll, you know, I'll, my, my runs are sped up by an hour. I think it's a useful tool. All right, thanks for watching.